Hey guys, so today I'm going to be sharing a few thoughts on Microsoft's acquisition of GitHub for $7.5 billion. Now, quite a few people have been talking about this, and I'm sure every hot take there is has been had. However, um, you know, I just thought I might share my views from the perspective of this particular YouTube channel. Now, I was thinking about this quite a lot over the past couple of days, and it does seem that for those of us following Microsoft's activities in the sort of the Linux open source space are not going to be massively surprised by this move. Microsoft are looking to gain a degree of relevance in the software developer community and this is the easiest and most Microsoft-esque way of doing it. In fact, there have been a number of uh, Linux commentators who have suggested uh, and even predicted that Microsoft might be looking to buy a Linux distribution over the next, say, five years. It could be one as big as Canonical. So, uh, but again, this is only speculation, and you know we're well into the the, the world of Linux-based conspiracy theories here. But um, you know, Microsoft are definitely uh, keeping their eye on Linux in the open source space, and in fact, have even brought out a Microsoft Linux-based operating system to support their Azure stack, which again makes a lot of sense, especially when you look at the success that Linux is having in the server world, and also, of course, on the adoption of phones and tablets through Android, Microsoft uh, Microsoft have completely lost their a lot of their their day to day usage in terms of market share because it was I think it was last year or maybe the year before that it was um, that it was you know that the statistics had indicated that the majority of people using. Uh, to, uh, the majority of people browsing the internet are do, doing so on a Linux-based operating system now. Microsoft have have lost, the, you know, even that's that significant market share. Now it's it it has escaped it in ways that we wouldn't necessarily have predicted ten to fifteen to even twenty years ago. But you know, sands do shift, and Microsoft need to adapt, or they could very well face a degree of extinction. So. Microsoft have geared their business model to software as a service, it seems, very similar to how Google and Apple also do this. It seems to be the most profitable way to make money off software these days. So why would Microsoft then go ahead and maintain and distribute their own proprietary kernel when they could basically just offload a lot of the work to a more freely available common kernel like Linux or maybe even something based on, on BSD or even something... Um, well, really, basically, Linux is, is what I'm implying here, and that we could very well see a desktop Microsoft operating system based on the Linux kernel at some point in the future, because it does seem that it would just be in Microsoft's interests to focus on developing software as a service rather than their underlying operating system. Uh, their operating system really is just acting as a foundation for a walled garden, but if they can do that with a Linux kernel, then why wouldn't they? It would mean that their operating system would uh, increase in security, It would, uh, and it would um, increase in, in cost effectiveness as well. So that would be uh, presumably decreasing the overall costs, but um, at, at least keeping it on a more sustainable track than having to worry about developing yet another piece of incredibly important software in-house. Now, this isn't really about Microsoft standing in the uh, in the tech sphere right now, but I was giving it some thought and thinking, well, if a company was going to acquire GitHub, and GitHub is ripe for acquisition, it's a vulnerable target. If Google had picked it up, would we be in a better situation? If Amazon picked it up, would we be in a better situation? If Verizon or Oath picked it up, would we then be in a better situation? I can't imagine, of course, Apple picking it up, but in reality, out of all of the big tech companies that can afford 7.5 billion acquisition, Microsoft might be one of the better ones. Probably isn't the best, but maybe one of the better ones. Um, I don't know whether or not a company like IBM or Sony were likely to have picked it up. I suppose they could have afforded it, but uh, it, it wasn't them, it was, it was Microsoft. And if it wasn't going to be Microsoft, it would be another company, presumably at some point down the line. But this hits on a bugbear that a lot of free and open source software advocates have had with GitHub for quite some time, and that's just its centralized nature. The idea that so much source code, so much free and open source source code, is uh, is contained within this single centralized repository. And whether or not Microsoft bought it out, it still maintains the same uh, engineering and structural problems, systemic problems that we uh, that we were worried about from for quite some time now. So there are alternatives. In fact, the good folks at Manjaro Linux have already uh, set up a GitLab uh, 
a, 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 Git ha a GitLab deployment of their own, so a self-hosted GitLab deployment, and are now hosting their operating system source code on that. So software migration isn't actually, or it doesn't seem to be too much of a big issue. Now, I, some time ago, moved and migrated all my projects from GitHub over to GitLab and it was a it was a couple of clicks of the mouse. It really was the easiest process that I could imagine, really. And the process was designed to to be such. And even the folks at GitLab are looking at trying to find some way of federating their um, their infrastructure and their you know their software that way as well. So it looks like there are some interesting things to be uh, to be said about GitLab, an emerging competitor. Now, that being said, there are distinct reasons why people choose to use GitHub to uh, house their source uh, source code. Most notably because it is a centralized focal point for software development and that it gives your project a higher degree of visibility when it is hosted on GitHub in a similar way to how when I post my videos on YouTube they are picked up and discovered by more people than if I post them on somewhere like BitChute or PeerTube. It's an issue of discoverability uh, before uh, free and open source purity it seems at this stage. But also with the fact that it seems to be reasonably easy to m migrate code away only really experiencing difficulties when maybe your pro um, your software project has a large number of people or relies on a lot of passing interest, then it might you know then you might be uh, more inclined to stick with with GitHub for then. But you know for smaller certainly one or two man operations, uh, migrating code away from GitHub is really a trivial uh, pursuit anyway. And uh, I was looking actually on al alternatives too for free and open source alternatives to GitHub because if we're going to move away from GitHub, we might as well move into a free and open source space. And there is GitLab. Now, GitHub, GitLab have a special community edition, but uh, it seems that people who, who have used that so far seem to be using it okay. Uh, but there is also GOGS, there's Launchpad there, which I believe is, is linked to Canonical, although I could be wrong on that one. Um, and that's it. And Gitty is something that has been um, recommended to me a few times as well. Gitbucket. Um, so there are quite a few uh, open source alternatives if you're into self-hosting. Self-hosting, though, it is quite expensive. And even on the basic digital ocean droplet of, was it $5 a month? That's a lot just to host a few lines of code if you're a very small project. So... In all honesty, if my project was doing well on GitHub, I don't know if I'd see too much of an issue to move because if it was okay a couple of weeks ago, then it should be okay now. And if it isn't, again, migration and your already established software licenses should protect you in this instance. So I don't think the sky is falling by this Microsoft acquisition, truth be told. Um, but again, of course, I would re I would prefer that GitHub remained a an independent company, and I'd even prefer it even more if they open source their software. But you know, dreams be dreams and all that. So, all in all, um, I think that it's worth reflecting on whether or not uh, a centralized structure like GitHub benefits the end developer, um, and and. Um, and I think that it has given us pause for thought in terms of, of lumping all of our software code into the single repository. So it's not necessarily like a max exodus to GitLab would wholly be beneficial, but as we all know, it's not going to happen like that. There will be a, a segment of projects that will leave GitHub to go to GitLab, and there will probably be some fracturing. There will be some projects that go off self-hosted, some that go off to, to other you know less known competition, and and I think that that fundamentally can be a good thing, providing that the software then uh, isn't hindered in terms of its maintenance as a result of, of scattering. But having one, uh, you know, one centralized uh, place for, for uh, software is as, as much of a... Um, as much of a danger as it uh, as the benefits that it offers. So, again, this is one of those cases where it's very much uh, working out the lay of the land, working out how your project is affected and or likely to be affected and to act accordingly. But uh, this is the typical threat that you get from centralized proprietary services is that at any time they could be acquired by a company that you don't necessarily want anything to do with. Now, speaking only um, for myself, I have not used Microsoft products now for many or for a significant number of years. I'm not 
too familiar with Microsoft as a day-to-day -day company. I'm not super comfortable working on Windows 10. I think outside of me trialing out Windows 10 when it came out, I've never touched it since. And, um, and, and I occasionally use Skype with a great deal of frustration because I'm sort of harangued into it uh, by a lot of other people and, um, and I can't use the it's not available on Linux excuse anymore. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, I thought I might just put out a, a few videos, although I'm not predominantly a software developer, my opinion on the matter is somewhat worthless, but um, considering it does fit within the realm of this channel speculation, I thought I might have a go and speculate. But all in all, uh, it's worth paying attention, it's worth reflecting on what this means for, um, for us, but in, in reality, it could have happened at any moment, it's an expected move by Microsoft and... Um, I, I guess better Microsoft than Amazon, better Microsoft than Google. And like I say, I will, I will say that Google are probably one of the better companies in, uh, you know, in terms of ethics in, in the, uh, out of the big companies these days. But that's not to be said that they should be, you know, buying up everything. I think that, um, I think that things are more complicated than that. And, um, and it'd be interesting to see if Microsoft do move even closer towards the open source world and towards the Linux world and whether or not we will see a desktop Linux distribution. I think that it's, per I think that it's possible. I think that this is what Microsoft could very well be gearing up towards because it does look like they um, are, um, are looking to sell software as a service before selling operating systems these days. Uh, but that is just my thoughts. Please, of course, let me know down in the comments section below. And um, yeah, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.